Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Liz and this is Let's Get Lizical where we do everything card making. Today I'm participating in the Get Creeping on Halloween hashtag from Inky and Scrappy. And we're going to be doing a cute little card with a technique I've not used on this channel before but I have used in the past. And we're going to be dry embossing with a stencil. This stencil right now is actually on clearance on scrapbook.com, links down in the description below. It's really cute, it's got a whole bunch of different like pumpkin faces, it is a repeat pattern. And I just thought it would be like really cute to use that as a bit of a textured background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange the plates for my Cricut Cuddlebug manual die cutting machine. And I'm just making sure that the clear plate is on top because it's a bit stiffer than the magic mat and then I'm putting the embossing um, sheet that comes with it. It's kind of like a rubbery sheet and I'm putting that under the stencil and then you see that it gets like this little bit of texture. It's not like super super like dimensional or anything. It's very subtle but it's like a really good way to just add texture to your card and just add a little bit of pattern without having to either stamp it or use like a super dimensional uh, 3D embossing folder. Stencils are very inexpensive most of the time, unless you're buying like packs that come in like sixes or whatever. Um, but they're just like an easy way to add texture to your card. I'm actually also using the Lawn Fawn Swivel Surprise die again today, just because I noticed that like, you know, these are circle dies, you can use them for anything. And the ring die is actually like a good matting layer if you like a thicker border. So what I did was I cut the ring die in with the glitter cardstock from scrapbook.com in a black color. For some reason, I always have problems cutting this paper. I don't know if it's just my cutting machine my, or my plates or whatever, but it cuts through the paper, but not through the top layer of the paper, which does not make sense to me. <laughs> um, the top layer where the glitter is, it's a bit more plasticky, I guess, and it cuts through it but not all the way but that it cuts through the backing paper no problem I don't, I don't get it um but what I do is I'm just gonna trim it with my scissors and I'm gonna push it through um front to back because you if you do it back to front you risk tearing up that glitter paper and maybe I will switch my plates and see if that works for the next time but yeah I've always had a problem cutting like glitter card stocks for some reason if you guys have any, any like tips and tricks let me know. I've tried using a shim and I get the same results. It just cuts the backing paper and I still have to push through the glitter cardstock. So yeah again if anybody has any tips and tricks let me know. <laughs> um, I also cut the circle die with the stitching and I'm going to use that as the top layer in white and then I'm just popping it up on lots of foam tape. I should have used more foam tape in my video yesterday but um, Today I decided to add extra. I went a little extra today. <laughs> and once that's done, we're gonna start stamping and coloring with the Mama Elephant set. But for now I struggle with my tape as always. I actually saw a video where they kind of like poked into the backing paper. So I tried that today, it actually works great. So I might try doing that a little more often instead of trying to just pick up the edges, which is what I normally do. And then because I have trust issues with foam tapes and double-sided tapes, I'm going to double sticky it for today. Sometimes I forget, sometimes I'm too lazy and I just leave it. But I have had cards where I go to them like a year later or something, they're still in my stash. And double-sided tapes dried out. Same with foam tape. Um, I think it just depends on climate and quality and whatnot. But I like to use liquid glue for most things nowadays. It just seems to help. Uh, so right now we're using the Mama Elephant Hey Pumpkin stamp set and I decided to use this cute little black cat in a pumpkin as my image for today and I'm just using C7 and C9 to color it in just because you don't want to use a solid black because it looks less natural and probably would want to use like maybe warmer tones but I don't have darker warm tones of markers. I am waiting for the Olos to come back in stock at Hollow Tree Hobbies so that I can get the gray ones. And then I'm going to color the pumpkins. I'm using the same oranges I used yesterday for my octopus 
and I just add shadow layer first and then I go over the whole thing with the main color, making sure I also go over those shadow layers. These colors are somewhat close in tone, so if you go over the shadow layer again, it just ensures that it stays darker than the base color. And then I'm adding a bit of brown to the top. And as always, I'm going to double stamp the image and bring back those black lines. And today I'm going to fussy cut. And my spring assist scissors lost its spring. It's very easy to put it back in. It was just kind of like, oh, I didn't know it could do that. <laughs> and I hate fussy cutting, but I was also too lazy to set up my machine just for this one image. So we're fussy cutting for today. <laughs> What do you guys think? Do you guys like coordinating dies or do you have a scan and cut? I have a scan and cut. I have coordinating dies that I started off with at the beginning as well, but I don't generally buy them anymore. I will have them for the sets that I'm coming out with for my own collection. Um, but I'm kind of like getting back into wanting to have the dies for things just because it's a lot quicker, a lot easier. It's just more pricey is the only problem. So I like my scan and cut because it saves me money there, but I do enjoy having the dies once in a while anyway. So now I'm just stamping the Hate Pumpkin Sentiment and usually you should do this before you add foam tape and whatnot, but this was kind of a make it up as you go kind of card today. I knew kind of what I wanted to do at the beginning and sometimes executing that plan on the Fly can be a little challenging, but we always make it work. Um, it did stamp kind of fuzzy the second time. I haven't used this stamp before, so the ink was kind of beating up on it. So I ended up trying to wipe it off, but I think I might have shifted the stencil when I did that. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting the straight banner from the swivel surprise set as well. And then I'm just going to stamp the hay pumpkin on that and then add it on top of the one that I stamped directly onto the circle. Sorry, my head's in the way. It's kind of hard to line these up, so you kind of need to be directly over it. So I'm just going to glue it over top of that other one, let the banner come out the edge a little bit, which I kind of like better anyway. So, you know, sometimes things happen for a reason. <laughs> and then I'm going to glue the cat directly down. I was thinking about foam tape for this as well, and then I drop it. And there's glue there, but that's okay. We're going to use our glue eraser to get rid of that. Normally it's for other types of glue and not liquid glue but I do find it does work on liquid glue as long as you do it very gently and you do it while it's still slightly wet um that's been my experience on how it works for me so that's what I did and now I'm going to use my Posca pen just to add some highlights to the pumpkins I didn't there, there was an oopsie there there was a lot that came out on that all I did was like put a paper towel on it tap it don't swish it around or you're going to spread it um, and it came up pretty easily, so I was very thankful for that. And then once this is done, I'm going to add a few black gems to this. The ones that I have are from Studio Katia, which is no longer in business. So the ones I linked below are from Trinity Stamps, which is my, you know, backup. <laughs> uh, but I'll probably have to order from them going forward. But that's pretty much our card for today, guys. If you decide to join, please ensure to tag Inky and Scrappy and hashtag get creeping on Halloween so that she can see it. And as not every month has 31 days, it's just posted on the last day of every month. But thanks again for joining me for today, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and let me know your thoughts. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, thanks, guys. Bye.